Birmingham New Street Station was built in central Birmingham by the London and North Western Railway between 1846 and 1854 on the site of several streets in a marshy area known as the Froggery, replacing several earlier rail termini on the outskirts of the centre, most notably Curzon Street, which had opened in 1838 and was no longer adequate for the level of traffic. Samuel Carter, solicitor to both the LNWR and the Midland Railway, managed the conveyancing. Until 1885, the LNWR shared the station with the Midland Railway. However, in 1885, the Midland Railway opened its own extension alongside the original station for the exclusive use of its trains, effectively creating two stations side by side. The two companies' stations were separated by a central roadway, Queen's Drive, and traffic grew steadily, and by 1900, New Street had an average of 40 trains an hour departing and arriving, rising to 53 in the peak hours. The LNWR had attained an Act of Parliament in 1846 to extend their line into the centre of Birmingham, which involved the acquisition of some 1.2 hectares of land and the demolition of around 70 houses in Peck Lane, the Froggery, Queen Street and Colmore Street. The Countess of Huntingdon's Connection Chapel on the corner of Peck Lane and Dudley Street, which had only been built six years before, was also demolished. The station was formally opened on the 1st of June 1854, although the uncompleted station had already been in use for two years as a terminus for trains from the Stour Valley Line, which had entered the station from Wolverhampton direction. On the formal opening day, the LNWR's Curzon Street station was closed to regular passenger services and trains from the London direction started using New Street. The station was constructed by Messrs Fox and Henderson and Company and designed by Edward Alfred Coper of that firm, who had previously worked on the design of the Crystal Palace. When the completed, New Street had the largest arched single-span iron and glass roof in the world, spanning a width of 211 feet and being 840 feet long. It had held this title for 40 years until London St Pancras opened in 1868. It was originally intended to have three spans supported by columns, however it was soon realised that the supporting columns would be severely restrict the working of the railway. Cowper's single span design was therefore adopted, and even though it was some 62 feet wider than most roof spans of this time. George Gilbert Scott praised Cowper's roof at New Street, stating an iron roof in its most normal condition is too spider-like a structure to be handsome, but with very little attention this defect is abbreviated. The most wonderful specimen probably that is Great Birmingham Station. When first opened, New Street was described as the Grand Central Station of Birmingham by Richard Forster. The internal layout of the tracks and platforms was designed by Robert Stevenson and his assistants. The station contained a total of nine platforms, comprising four through and five bay platforms. The main entrance building on Stevenson Street incorporated Queen's Hotel, designed by John William Livelock which was opened on the same day. It was built in the Italianate style and provided originally with 60 rooms. The hotel was expanded several times over the years and reached its final form in 1917 with the addition of the new West Wing. The roof of the original station was strengthened with additional steel tie bars during 1906 and 1907 as a precaution following the collapse of a similar roof which killed six people at Charing Cross Railway Station. Midland railway trains that had used Curzon Street began to use New Street from 1854, however its use by the Midland railway was limited by the fact that those trains go between Derby and Bristol had to reverse, so many trains bypassed New Street and ran through Camp Hill. This was remedied in 1885 when a new link to the south, the Birmingham West Suburban Railway, was extended into New Street and allowed through trains to and from the southwest to run via New Street without reversing. 
To cope with this increase in traffic that this would bring, the station required an extension, and the construction of this began in 1881. A number of buildings, mostly along Dudley Street, were demolished to make room for it, including a number of cottages, some business premises, and a small church. Built immediately to the south of the original station, the extension comprised of four through platforms and one bay. It consisted of a train shed with a glass and steel roof comprised of two trussed arches, 80 feet 58 feet wide and by 620 feet long and 667 feet 6 inches wide by 600 feet long. It was designed by Francis Stevenson, chief engineer of the LNWR. The extension was opened on the 8th of February 1885 and with its completion, New Street nearly doubled in size and became one of the largest railway stations in Britain, covering an area of over 12 acres. In 1885, the number of daily uses on the station was surveyed, and on a Thursday, the number was 22,452. On a Saturday, 25,354. Initially, the extension was used by both the LNWR and the Midland Railway, but from 1888, it was used by Midland Railway trains. It was separated by the original LNWR train shed by Queen's Drive, which became a central carriageway but the two were linked by a footbridge which ran over Queen's Drive and across the entire width of both LNWR and Midland stations. Queen's Drive was lost in the 1960s rebuild, but the name was later carried by a new driveway which served the car park, tower block and his access route for the station's taxis. On the 1st of February 1910, the LNWR introduced a city-to-city -city service between Birmingham New Street and Broad Street Station in the City of London. This service, however, lasted only five years before being withdrawn as a result of World War I. In 1928, the LNWR and Midland Railway, with others, were grouped into the London Midland and Scottish Railway by the Railways Act of 1921. And in 1948, the railways were nationalised and came under the control of British Railways. During World War II, Cowper's roof sustained extensive bomb damage as a result to air raids during the Birmingham Blitz. After the war, the remains of the roof were dismantled after being deemed beyond economic repair. It was replaced by austere canopies over the platforms made sur by surplus war materials, which remained in use until the station was rebuilt in the 1960s. Speaking of that rebuild, the station was completely rebuilt in the 1960s as part of the modernisation programme of the West Coast Main Line. Demolition of the old station and Queen's Hotel began in 1964, but was not completed until 1966. The rebuilt New Street station was opened on the 6th of March 1967 to coincide with the introduction of electric express trains on the West Coast Main Line, at a cost of £4.5 million, which is about uh, £82 million in nowadays money. The new station was designed by Kenneth J. Davis, lead planner of British Rail's London Midland region, with 12 through platforms replacing the 8 through and 6 bay platforms of the previous station. The platforms were covered by an over 7-acre concrete deck, supported by 200 columns, and upon which the concourse and other buildings were constructed. Escalators and stairs and lifts were provided to reach the platforms from the concourse. The new station had sold its air rights, leading to the construction of the Palisade Shopping Centre, known then as the Birmingham Shopping Centre, above the station between 1868 and 1970. The public right-of-way across the station, which had previously been maintained by the station footbridge, was retained in the new station via a winding route through the shopping centre. The station and the Palisades were partly integrated with the Bullring Shopping Centre via elevated walkways above Smallbrook Queensway. Also above the station was a nine-storey office block called Ladywood House and a multi-storey car park dating from the 1970s. The car park closed in May of 2012 and was demolished to provide space for the new concourse to be rebuilt. Stevenson Tower, a 20-storey residential block, was built alongside the station between 1965 and 1966. The tower was designed by City Architect of Birmingham and was demolished in March 2012 as part of the station redevelopment. In 1987, 12 different horse sculptures by Ken Atherton titled Iron Horse were erected between New Street and Wolverhampton at a cost of £12,000. One of these stands on Platform 7 at Birmingham New Street. 
Due to its enclosed subsurface platforms, New Street was designed as an underground station by the fire service, and in the 1990s a number of changes had to be made to the station in order to comply with stricter fire regulations. Introduced for underground stations as a result of the 1987 King's Cross fire. In 1993, a new footbridge, enclosed footbridge was opened at the Wolverhampton end of the station, with access to platforms separated by from the main building. This was built primarily as a fire exit, but with the new exit from the station into Navigation Street was open to the public. All wooden fittings were removed from the platforms and new fire doors were also installed at the foot of the stairs and elevators on the platforms. The concrete constructed design of the 1960s was considered and criticised for being too ugly. An enclosed station with buildings over it, most of its span and passenger numbers more than twice what it was designed for by 2007 was not popular with its users, having customer satisfaction of only 52%, the joint lowest of any network rail major station. The power signal box of Birmingham New Street was completed in 1964 on the site of the former turntable, housing the Westpac geographical interlocking and signalman's push-button control panel, and also the railway telephone exchange. It was a brutalist building with cog corrugated concrete architecture designed by John Bicknell and Paul Hamilton in collaboration with Robert William Robert Headingley the regional architect of the British Railways London Midland region. The eight-level structure with five main stories, including track and level street levels and a cable chamber below track level, is at the side of the tracks connected to Navigation Street. As of 2020, it was a Grade 2 listed building, and until recently, two small sidings, numbers 2 and 3, were located in front of the signal box for which use for stabling electric locos in connection with loco changes from diesel to electric traction on cross-country services heading north. As they were no longer needed, these have now been removed in connection with the ongoing resigling project of the area. Number one engine shed, which was located at the north end between platforms 4 and 5, was also lengthened some years ago to form platform 4C. In 2003, the station was voted the second biggest eyesore in the UK by readers of Country Life magazine. This was because of the subsurface nature of the station and in 1960s architecture. In 2007, New Street was voted joint worst station for customer satisfaction with the Liverpool Lime Street and East Croydon. Only 52% satisfied, the national average being 60%. The 1960s station also had become inadequate for the level of traffic which it was dealing with and had to be designed, it had been designed to capacity of 650 trains and 6,000 passengers. In 2008, there was more than double the trains and double the passengers a day. By 2013, it was 140 passengers. This made overcrowding and closures on safety grounds more common. A feasible study into the redevelopment of the station was approved in January 2005. Design showed to the public in February 2006 for a new Birmingham New Street station in a project known as Gateway Plus. A regeneration scheme was launched in 2006 and evolved through names such as Birmingham Gateway, Gateway Plus and New Street Gateway. The scheme proposed complete rebuilding of the street level buildings and refurbishment of the platforms by 2013, with track and platform levels remaining essentially unchanged. The approved planning application of August 2006 showed a glass facade with rounded edges. The entrance on Station Street originally included two curved 130 metre tall towers on the site of Stevenson's Tower, but due to the economic slowdown, the Twin Towers plan was shelved. In February 2008, the Secretary of State, Ruth Kelly, announced that the Department of Transport would provide £160 million in addition to £128 million through the government white paper delivering a substantial railway. A further £100 million came from the Department of Business, Enterprise and Regulation Reform and channelled through Advantage West Midlands, the regional development agency. The announcement brought total government spending on the project to £388 million. After earlier proposals were discarded, six architects were shortlisted to design the new station following a call for submissions. The approved plans for the redevelopment included a new concourse three and a half times larger than the 1960s concourse with a domed atrium at the centre to let in natural light, refurbished platforms reached by new escalators and lifts, and a new station facade with new entrances. 
The fact that the proposed gateway development would leave the railway capacity of the station more or less unaltered had not escaped the attention, and the House of the Commons Transport Committee criticised the plans. It was not convinced they were adequate to the number of trains which could use the station. It said if the station could not be adapted, the government needed to look at alternative solutions, which potentially included a completely new station in the city. Work began on Birmingham New Street on the redevelopment on the 26th of April 2010. Construction was completed in phases to minimise disruption, and on the 28th of April 2013, one half of the new concourse was opened to the public. The old 1960s concourse closed for redevelopment along with the old entrances. The complete concourse closure opened on the 20th of uh, September 2015, the Grand Central Shopping Centre four days later. The refurbished Palisade Shopping Centre was renamed Grand Central and included the new John Lewis department store. During, although during heavy winds of 2015, several roof tiles blew off, landing in the adjacent Station Street, which therefore closed by the police as a precautionary measure. So let's get things started with a double, as 150, 254 and 158, 831 depart, whilst 350, 401 and 35124 arrive. Work in the 1136 transport for Wales service from Hollyhead to Birmingham International and terminating five minutes early with a London Northwestern Railway service from Northampton, respectively. Over on the far side, we see 323212 and 323218 working the 1143 West Midlands Railway Service from Four Oaks to Redditch. Sneaking out behind it is Heroes is 350-266, working the 1139 West Midlands Railway Service to Birmingham International. Due to engineering works at Water Orton, all cross-country services from Scotland are through the Cross City Line and have a huge layover here in Birmingham New Street as is seen with 43207, Coaching Stock XC01 and 43366 working the 1212 Cross Country Service from Edinburgh Waverley to Plymouth. Next out we see the departure of 323241 and 323220 with the 1145 West Midlands Railway Service from Redditch to Four Oaks.
Next train out to the station is 390.049, working the 11.50 of anti-West Coast service to London Euston. Next in for cross country is 221127 and 220021, working the 1157 service Reading to Manchester Piccadilly. And as that departs, we see the departure of 35405, working the 1153 London North Western Railway service to Northampton. Taking us by surprise on departure is 323208, working the 1155 West Midlands Railway Service from Bromsgrove to Litchfield Trent Valley. One in, one out now as 35129 passes 35267. Working the 11, 1207 West Midlands Railway Service from Warsaw to Wolverhampton and the 1157 West Midlands Railway Service from Wolverhampton to Warsaw, respectively. Another one in, one out now as 220001 and 221124 depart, while 35253 arrives, working the 1204 cross country service from Manchester Piccadilly to Reading and terminating with a West Midlands Railway service from Birmingham International, respectively.
arriving with a bit of a layover itself is 390 154. Working the 1215 of anti West Coast service from London Euston to Edinburgh Waverley. Next in is 323243 and 323210. Working the 1215 West Midlands Railway service from Four Oaks to Redditch. Departing from behind the Desiro set is 390.010, working the 1210 of Anti West Coast service from Blackpool North to London Euston. Coming from behind the Pendolino is 221119, working the 1212 cross country service from Bristol Temple Meads to Aberdeen. Getting the right away, we see 35124 and 35401 depart with the 1214 London North Western Railway service to Northampton. Trying to sneak out of this again is 323 222 and 323 219. Working the 1215 West Midlands Railway service from Redditch to Four Oaks.
Another in-out combination now as 350-370 passes 158-831 and 150-254. Working the 1217 West Midlands Railway Service to Birmingham International and the 1225 Transport for Wales Service of Birmingham International to Aberystwyth and Pafeli, respectively. Next in to terminate with a London North Western Railway service from Northampton is 350, 374 and 350, 245. Next to terminate with a Avanti West Coast service from London Euston is 390-040. Next out is 323-201 and 323-242, working the 1225 West Midlands Railway Service from Bromsgrove to Litchfield Trent Valley. Coming in to terminate with a West Midlands Railway service from Warsaw is 350-123. Next out to depart with the 1227 West Midlands Railway service to Warsaw is 350-263. Next in over on the far side, 323-217 and 323-202, working the 1233 West Midlands Railway Service from Litchfield Trent Valley to Bromsgrove.
Next in to terminate off Birmingham International for West Midlands Railway is 350-266. And the final train on this side is 323 220 and 323 241. Working the 1243 West Midlands Railway service from Four Oaks to Redditch. After a quick swap of the ends, we see 17113 and 17117 arrive as 350 126 departs. Terminated with a cross country service from Cardiff Central and departed with the 1246 West Midlands Railway service to Rugey Trent Valley, respectively. Next train in is 350-369, working the 1257 West Midlands Railway service from Wolverhampton to Warsaw. And as that arrives, departing on the far side is 172007 and 17501. Working the 1250 West Midlands Railway service to Hereford. A pair of arrivals now as 350 242 and 350 410 arrive, whilst 350 207 and 350 211 arrive on the far side. Terminated with a London Northwestern Railway service from Liverpool Lime Street and working the 1255 West Midlands Railway service from Bromsgrove to Litchfield Trent Valley, respectively. Arriving to terminate four minutes late with a West Midlands Railway service off Shrewsbury is 17510 Beast and 175. Oh, fuck's sake, it's 505. Will you piss off to East Midlands Railway already?
next train out is 220002 and 220029. Working the 1257 cross country service from Bournemouth to Manchester Piccadilly. Next in to arrive at Birmingham New Street is 220011 and 221129. Working the 1304 cross country service from Manchester Piccadilly to Bournemouth. And quickly departing in the opposite direction is 17505 and 17510, working the 1300 West Midlands Railway service to Shrewsbury. Next up we have triple the action for you as 350.410 and 350.242 depart with the 1304 London North Western Railway service to Liverpool Lime Street, 323.216 and 323.203 depart in the background with the 1303 West Midlands Railway service to Literal Trent Valley to Bromsgrove, whilst coming out of the tunnel and arriving is 220024. Working the 1312 cross country service from Plymouth to Newcastle, respectively. Next train out of the tunnel is 39130 City of Edinburgh. Working the 1310 Avanti West Coast service from. Well, it's come from Edinburgh Waverley! And it's going to London Euston. Irony! Going in the opposite direction is 35267. Working 1307 West Midlands Railway Zone from Warsaw to Wolverhampton.
taking us very much by surprise and terminating from Hereford is 172218. And as that arrives, we see the arrival of 350257 depart terminating with a West Midlands Railway service from Rugeley Trent Valley. Next train to depart is 350 3.70, working the 1310 West Midlands Railway service to Rugeley Trent Valley. Next train out to depart is 220019 and 221134, working the 1312 cross country service from Edinburgh Waverley to Bristol Temple Meads. Next train out to depart is 390-115, working the 1315 Avanti West Coast service from London Euston to Preston. Coming in to terminate with a West Midlands Railway service from Wolverhampton is 350129. In the background, towards the end, you will see 323219 and 323222 working the 1315 West Midlands Railway service from Four Oaks to Redditch. Next in to arrive is 323218 and 323212, working the slightly delayed 1315 West Midlands Railway service of Redditch to Four Oaks. Next in to terminate with a London North Western Railway service off crew is 350-408.
Next train out is 350129, working the 1322 London North Western Railway service to Crewe. Next in to arrive with the 1325 West Midlands Railway service from Bromsgrove to Litchfield Trent Valley is 323214 and 323209. Next train out for departure is 158826 and 158837. Working the 1325 Transport for Wales service from Birmingham International to Hollyhead. Next out to depart 17113 and 17117 with the 1330 cross country service to Cardiff Central. Next train out of the tunnel is 158825 and 158823, working the 1336 Transport for Wales service from Hollyhead to Birmingham International. And as that arrives, we see 323208 departed in the background with the 1333 West Midlands Railway service from Literal Trent Valley to Bromsgrove. Final pair of arrivals and departures now as 35263 departs while 3323 210 and 323243 arrives, working the 1340 West Midlands Railway service to Wolverhampton and the 1340 West Midlands Railway service from Redditch to Four Oaks respectively.
And to finish off this video, we see 350 233, terminating with a West Midlands Railway service from Rugeley Trent Valley. Thank you so much for watching everyone. If you enjoyed what you saw, click on the two videos here at the end screen. It helps out the channel. Also don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you uh, are new and got this far. And we'll see you all in the next video folks, wherever that may take us. We'll see you then folks.